this is the intro movie, which we decided we wanted to put um, credits like an actual movie, a nod to Pixar. Now you guys can jump in anytime because Bing's gonna edit all this. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Maybe don't do that though. <laughs> jump in after you finish your so great start over. Juice. It's not a nod to Pixar. It's our own movie. Well, that's true. This is an odd thing. <laughs> well, yeah, it's just said that we, we could do dubs when you do. So. so this is actually the bedroom. Um, this is the very first scene of Fetch 1.0, the original design. We actually interacted in the bedroom quite a bit. Um, we had to change our design a little bit, so now the bedroom's just an intro. And it's been mirrored, which still nauseates me. <laughs> he was supposed to go into the kitchen. Instead of outside. Mm -hmm. So instead of just going out and playing all these cool billboards, which are really cool, and this is our this is the extent of our tutorial, by the way, because when we watch people play this, no one wants to touch the screen; they're just waiting. So, so here I'm tapping all the all the construction equipment. I just received an achievement. Check this out. So this is our achievement system in the game. These collectible cards. You can see if you want to get a closer look at those. Because achievements for years have just kind of grad just barely told you that they were there, but we decided we wanted to give the player the option. So if you just leave it alone, it'll spin away into the visor, but if you tap on it, it'll either say Kapow or Booyah. The visor acts as the main menu for the game, so you can navigate, you can see different dog collars that you're going to collect through the game, different achievements, and also unlockable arcades, which we'll get to later. And Peter loves it when you want to put pages and pages and pages of things in the visor loves it. <laughs> so everything in the world is interactive. So here's a billboard uh, sign. You can hammer down these nails. Oh, my First of cheap. many 80s references that are found in Fetch. Mm-hmm. We also have a barking dog. <laughs> and that originally was going to play how much is that dog in the window, but we ran out of time. Conveniently. Oh, hit the newspaper, because if you tap it fast enough, it'll go LOL, 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 mm -hmm. Go over and look at the newspaper here. See what the Everville Times news is up to. LOL, 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 LOL. Arcade week begins. The hydrant with eyes. Very spooky stuff. Here's one of our interactive billboards. If you touch that over here on the left side. Looks like maybe um, we used uh, robot speech for all of the billboards and a lot of the like PA systems in the game because it's easy to localize. Yeah, another neat thing about the billboards you'll see when you come into the next scene, but they're actually being marketed to the boy. So we got to clear that debris with a big crane. And, the, and the, we should actually mention that that debris was added because people would get to the screen and they did they would refuse to touch anything or move anywhere because there wasn't an obstacle. So we put some obstacles on the sidewall, <laughs> or they would just go right yeah. and not tap on anything. <clears throat> yep, and then be confused. Okay, I'm going to tap on the right side of the screen now. And go to the next screen. <laughs> Ten four, good buddy. Screen tapped. So, uh, that's what I was talking about the, earlier, all the uh, ads were fingers. targeting other things, okay. like lenders, and things this boy wouldn't that's care about, that's why. but now they're referring to things he might care about. Let, do that again, Sean Richard, because Brian was talking. So what I was saying was, initially when he came into the scene, all the billboards were targeted to things that someone else in the household might like, like blenders and big fish and things like that. Hoovers. But now they're uh, marketed to the boy, and things he'd like, like space lasers and uh, the doggy communication device. DCD. Which used to be featured heavily in the game, but now is relegated to a little advertisement. Right here. That was a great <laughs> decision. <laughs> the original poster for that said Bark to the Future. I was really proud of that. <laughs> number? That's, uh, what are we at, 80s reference number two? Yep. Two of 50. 80s references collected. Now 30% more round. Brought to you by Hip Hop Man's 
So that poster is leading up toward Alien Shooter, but Brian is now demonstrating what I thought he would, is the cacophony that happens when you hit every poster at the same time. Kapow! Mad Men. Advertising gurus. Let's involve you guys. Yeah. This is, uh, so Brian, when he looked at this poster, he decided, why not have poop? <laughs> <laughs> why not have poop? So... I thought that was paint. It is paint. Yeah. So, oh, I thought it was poop. <laughs> is that paint? We'll see, the player can decide. It's, it's okay. Paint. There's been many discussions and confusions over what it actually is. Where would the poop come from? Birds. Birds. The one sitting on the... <laughs> Wire. The break wire. Right. Finger. The, the one that's in third place. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anywho, this is this is uh, this is the first of several arcade machines you find, and the reason that they're scattered about the world is because it's Embark Arcade Week. So you one just of, get to play it. One of the coolest things about this arcade game is it was sort of part of the initial prototype that got this game going and moved away from being just a traditional um, arcade, uh, sorry, adventure game. Now it has more of the arcade elements. It was part of our initial, uh, I guess, vertical slice to prove that we could both adventure and arcade. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there was a question. How would people respond to two types of gameplay? And, well, I'll just let Brian play Alien Shooter. There's two ways to play this. There's the single finger method, which Brian is currently not using. <laughs> and then there's the place four fingers on each side of the screen and just drum them back and forth and they won't even get a meteor out so that's a that's a pro tip so what you may notice is a tidbit is oh, in between meteor. waves of oh. these aliens dying to, uh, oh man he got hit by a meteor oh no so yeah now back to my wave over so you're not gonna, they can't see your fingers if you do it no this is too bad for you yet. That's why we have to describe more what we're doing. So right now, Brian is using... Oh yeah, he used almost all four fingers on one hand. <laughs> if you use eight fingers, whoa! <laughs> you can Let's keep it down to three fingers. <laughs> you can leave the game. This is the final wave. I think I'm going to get a big score, guys. You know, well, and I'll also say... A really big score. All right, you know. might break a billion. Oh! Whoa! 1.9 billion. <laughs> you okay. see bears on the rocket ship? That actually that pays homage to an original idea that we had. I have bears. noticed that. Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> what? I, I was I was looking at the big red arrow. <laughs> and why like, press here? Yeah, I'm like thirteen months making a game. <laughs> yeah. And you're a chip I have well never well. seen that. <laughs> so that was an ad recently. <laughs> he barks. He barks. Tap on him. <laughs> no, he, he doesn't. Yeah, you yeah, can't yeah, hear him behind the high arm. Wow. <laughs> Okay, that's Peter Yap, our lead developer, <laughs> who's never known as Bear in a rocket ship. It's the so Embark now, delivery truck. Because we just beat this arcade game, of course we're going to get a prize. So let's see what's in the box. So just tap on the box. Well, we do get a prize for every arcade game. Yeah, we do. Why? Wow. Seriously? Well, I mean, I knew we got a prize, but I never really thought of it in those words. <laughs> okay, the development team obviously hasn't played the game. They just built it. So, now this is a 100% crowd pleaser. Um, is the bubble bubble wrap, and you can see just about everyone that I've seen play this. As soon as they see the gun, you see when I see the gun, I'm like, whoa! I get yeah, a cool yeah, laser yeah. water pistol. Everyone else is like, oh my gosh, can I press those? Mm -hmm. And I say, yeah, and they press them. It's like, can I press all of them? And also, anecdotally, I'd say 99% of people pop every single bubble. I have seen some people leave one, and it really bothers me. Uh oh. It's a little, uh, oh, what? Yeah. So one thing, the uh, people like to skip cutscenes. So when Brian hits the screen, the cutscene's still playing, but we trigger lightning and. Uh oh. No. Oh. oh man. So Bear just got taken. Oh no. Oh no. That kid's getting grounded. We used to have a different sound effect in for that, and I wish we could play it for you right now. <laughs> it was can a, you, can it was, you simulate it? It was the sound of a 35-year-old man screaming for <laughs> five to ten seconds. Um, this is very much like a... Kind of a, gar <laughs> yeah, kind of a gargly scream. Um, and people would look at me and say, they would laugh, and they'd say, that's not final, is it? And we would say, probably. 
but it's not. Most people would ask, is that Chris? <laughs> there was actually it's one exactly person the... who asked if it was the dog. Yeah, some people do that. Oh, this is Mike Barron. Huge, huge props to him for this animation, pulling on the heartstrings. Everybody goes, oh, Like that. Aww. And the focus tester was like, yeah, kick him. <laughs> kick him. He took your dog. So we do have something that we just got from our as a prize from our arcade game. Let's see if we have Oh, and you lost the gun. <laughs> oh, the introduction of an old St. Mark. So that's a little bit mysterious, but...